Well, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Today and for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be trying something new. We are going old school all the way back to 2013, and we are trying out the game Shadow Run Returns by Harebrain Schemes. Now, this is a tactical role playing game set in a cyberpunk dystopia. And we've made our character. We will meet her in just a minute. But first thing first. Says down and out, your apartment, three o'clock in the morning. It's got four walls, a roof, and isn't on fire. Even the cockroaches have fled in search of better accommodations. Not exactly a runner's dream pad, but right now it's about all you have left. Running the shadows is all about feast or famine. One day you're Nova Hot, working jobs that allow you to eat at five star restaurants. The next, well, you're here. This one's a famine for the ages. Slagging fixer hasn't called. The money's run out, and then some. Sinless and free. Free to starve in the cracks of a society run by megacorps who just want your nunya. Nuyen. Something needs to change, and soon. Your part, Matt. Alright, so. Looks like we can look at some things. The first thing we're going to look at is... Let's see. Huh. I was going to say first thing we're going to look at is the settings, but I can't, apparently. All right. A slip of paper with your bank balance. Enough to cover you through the end of the week. Wait, what's over here? Your notebook, calendar, contacts, that kind of thing. View your list of contacts. And it looks, the list is sad, dried up. Carter Detroit, fixer, no response to messages. Dowd, runner, dead. Felt Nash, fixer, missing since February. New Larry, runner, dead. Sam Watts, runner, question mark, probably in a gutter somewhere. Dungoma, runner, dead. Half Jack, dealer. Retired or dead. The list goes on. All either dead ends or just plain dead. View your personal calendar. It's empty. Nothing to do. All right, let's put down our notebook. Answer your VIT phone. Okay. The screen leaps to life, making a squint against its brightness. The face on the screen is laughing. Sam Watts. Hey, buddy. Hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. He giggles. He's drunk again. Or worse. You're zoned. Another giggle. Oh, don't, don't bother with your side of the conversation. I'm not really here. Just one reason for this bit. Someone finally geeked me. I'm dead. I probably had it coming. When you're an unsavory character like myself, you tend to associate with other unsavory characters who often partake in unsavory business, like you, for example. So why am I dead? Who knows? Probably my fault. I wonder where you are right now. I bet you hit a big payday and you're living high on the hog somewhere. Some of us are born winners and some of us are... me. Hey, you remember that Rinraku run when things went to hell and we lost Dowd? Or that makeshift saloon on the docks afterward? I really had your back that night, didn't I? Dowd. That's a name you haven't heard in a long time. Oh, we're getting a flashback. Okay. Very good. Three years ago, a makeshift bar on the Seattle docks, the night Dowd went down. You've been running with New Larry for about six months now. He's a combat mage with a bad tattoo and a bad attitude. He knew Dowd almost as well as you did. Dowd. Never saw anybody like that die like that before, idiot. He shakes his head. I hate this fragging city, Miss Bella. It's wet, and the rain feels like acid, and I want out of here. I get it. Now take a pill and relax. Sure, Miss Bella. Sure. Whatever you say. I don't know, Miss Bella. Sam is a good guy and can hold his own in a fight, but he's been hitting the bottle pretty good lately. Never on a run, so far. 
but he needs watching. He shakes his head. That run went sideways nine ways to Sunday. Now the fixer is late. What do you think we should do? I don't know. I'm not the brains of this operation, but I'm thinking we slot and run. The money's just not worth what happened to Dowd. Cut the direct, Sam. We both know why Dowd went down, and it wasn't the fix. There are some other paranoid chip dream of yours. Sam smiles a toothy smile. I've been waiting for this all night. New Larry has something he wants to say, don't you, Larry? Go ahead, spill it. You were sloppy, he laughed. Sloppy? You think I was sloppy? You have been twitchy all day, son. Look at your hands. They're shaking. That true, Sam? Did you miss a beat back there? No, Miss Bella, I didn't miss a beat. I was on my game the whole time. Remember? I was on point. New Larry was supposed to cover Dowd. Something dawns on him. He leans into New Larry, amused and dangerous. We were set up, and he knows it, don't you, Larry? What was that call you made before we hit Renraku? How come you couldn't geek that guy before he unloaded on Dowd? I've seen you fling a lightning bolt, son. He should have been burnt toast before his gun cleared the holster. New Larry checks his watch, licks his lip, looks over your shoulder at the darkness. He's looking for someone, and it's not Victor. Okay, I can see where this is going. You chummers are damaged. I'm out. Did you keep us here long enough, Larry? He stops a smile, slowly appears on his face. Looks that way. Sorry, Miss Bella. I kind of like you. I just like money better. We've got incoming. New Larry relaxes and throws you a direct eating grin. Looks like my new Renraku friends are finally here. They're going to take that hard drive off your carts, buddy. We should choose our friends more carefully, Miss Bella. Buy you a drink after this? You owe me several. Leave the mage, kill the others. You're now in turn-based combat mode. Each character on your team has an action pool. Spin those action on movements, attacks, or using spells and items. Once your team turn is complete, the enemy team will move and attack. Oh, we got incoming on the other side. Okay. Oh, these guys are bad. <laughs> That's bad. They have a shaman. Ouch. Ow. Okay. Let's get rid of you. Out of ammo. Oh, oh we are gonna die. any healing on you? Oh. 
missed. Got rid of that. Do you have any other weapons, dude? Your best. Sangoma lowers her gun. I, Sam. You okay, Sam? Sam's breathing is heavy and he looks shaken. That was a hell of a thing. You don't look so good, Sam. You were born for this gig, Miss Bella. Me? Not so much. I think I'm going to hang it up. We'll find a nice brothel somewhere. Stay drunk until I croak. What about you? I'll find a safe house out of town. Lay low. Rinraku has a long memory. I do too. I don't forget my friends. Ooh. That was a rough fight. They barely survived it. You stare at Sam's face on your comm link. Shake off the memory. Focus. I had your back that night, didn't I? Now I'm asking myself, who would care if I die? Who would give a rat's ass? Better or worse, your name is at the top of the list. Maybe it's the only name on the list. So I set up a dead man's switch to send you this call. I got a hundred thousand new yen insurance policy, payable when you find who creased me. Alive with a conviction or in a body bag with justification. Either works. Contact my law firm, Rogers, Mingert, and McCain. When the job is done, they'll know what to do. He turns to his left. Chet? The camera swivels to show a well dressed man sitting next to Sam. Persuaded to Mr. Watts' wishes, Rogers, Mingert, and McCain has installed a secure dedicated phone line so you may contact us directly when the task is complete. We will then begin the verification process. Note that you must also be on a secure landline to access this number. We will not accept transmissions from comm links or other devices. The camera swivels back to Sam. Sam straightens up, talks seriously, first time. Look, Miss Bella, I've led a direct life, and I probably left a direct corpse. I've hurt people, hurt myself, I don't know. Maybe I just want the last word. Maybe I just want someone to give a crap that I sucked air for a while. What do you say? I'll get to the bottom of this. Someone will pay. Hope you just said yes. I've got a locator chip slot in my head these days. If, when my heart stops, it'll activate. That's how you'll find me. See you on the slab. Rest in peace, Sam. See you in Seattle. The Dead Man's Switch. Your plane hits the sea Mac tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision as you step onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped backseat of a cab, following the signal from Sam's locator tip into the heart of the Redmond Barrows. Barons. Organ grinders, a legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or the dead. If you're hurting, hurting bad enough for the new yen, this is the place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This franchise is the closest thing to the Barons has to a morgue. It seems this is where Sam Watt's body has ended up. You open the door and are assaulted by the smell of death and bleach. Yikes. We need to ask the coroner about Sam Watt. Now, where is the coroner? I'm in the back! Oh, okay. 
The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty fake fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf whistling a tune. His broad grin says, I love my job. A little more than you'd want or expect from someone in the chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There's something kind of kindly in his eyes, though it might just be a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, ma'am? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden, the Oregon Grinders branch manager here, so yeah, that makes me this franchise area's coroner, too. And you are? Uh, Miss Bella. I'm here about Sam Watt. His grin fades. And what makes you think I know anything about that? Sam had a locator chip embedded in his skull. I followed it here. I see. Well, you're right. He's here. Not too many people know about the murder yet, though. The press haven't caught wind of it yet. What with it being all the way out here in the Barrens. So, who told you he was dead? Uh, Sam's digital ghost. When his heart stopped, I got sent a recorded message asking me to bring his killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. The dwarf raises his eyebrows, a smile wiping the suspicion from his face. A dead man's switch, eh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over here. He's my second Emerald City Ripper victim. The third one was downtown. Sounds grisly. He sighs. Not my title. That's what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All I know is that, like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scalpel. But this one's even more twisted. He or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. What prize did the Ripper take from Sam? Watt's liver was plainly cut out. Whiz. What else? The first victim's heart was missing, and the third had the spleen removed. Dresden, get out here. I'm here about the new Ripper Vic, Sam Watt. Towering over the diminutive coroner is a homicide detective right out of central casting, if you ignore the tusks, pointed ears, and Neanderthal brow. You can smell his cheap aftershave from a mile away. So this new Ripper Vic, Watt, name's familiar. Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? The coroner frowns. So you insisted at the time? He chortles. Come on, she offed herself. I had it on very good authority. Now... Let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with here. This Ripper case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I already posted everything I know. The killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic, then removes a single internal organ while they're still alive. The perpetrator is most likely right-handed with a slim hand that knows its way around a scaffold, has a decent understanding of human and metahuman anatomy, too. So, I'm looking for a whacked-out surgeon? Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who still use scaffolds anymore. These days, it's all done with computer-controlled lasers. Could be anyone, from a military-filled surgeon to an antique medicine aficionado. You're no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star Detective finally notices you. You note his superhuman powers of observation. Who the hell are you? Are you the detective on this case? I was hired by Sam Watts to assist you in finding his killer. The dreck you were! You get anywhere near my investigation and it will be you on the slab, human. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden, get me more. I'm putting someone in a cell or a box this week and claiming my promotion. Dresden looks amused. Do you always make friends that easily? 
Well, he didn't really seem like my type. He cocks his head to one side. Be straight with me. You really gonna work for the dead man? Sam was there when I needed him. I'm gonna return the favor. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't interested in anything but Detective McCluskey. He'd convict his own mother if it meant another ten New Yen a week in his paycheck. Plus, he's on the tape. Tristan pauses, considering. You have a honor, after a fashion. I try to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common. What can I do to help? What was Mc that McCluskey said about Sam's mother? The official report is that she committed suicide about a year ago. Uh, you... Sounds like you disagreed with the findings. My name's on the report, but my actual findings left some doubts. I can't say that it wasn't suicide, but there were unusual bruises on her upper arms, and she didn't use her dominant hand to pull the trigger. I was told to drop it, so I dropped it. Who still uses scalpel? Doctors still learn how to use them in their first year of medical school, as do coroners, but neither profession uses them much anymore. It's possible some of the slimmer, slimier chops still use scalpels, I suppose, but I wouldn't know where to look. What are organs worth these days? A whole healthy body can be worth a bunch of nuyen, but individual organs? Not worth as much anymore. Well, with all the synth and cyber stuff on the market these days. Organ grinders only deals in the recently deceased. There's plenty of other chop shops that aren't as picky, though. And they don't care where the bodies come from, either. So, you say the detective's on the tape. Who's paying to hold his leash? I don't know, but someone with the major pull has been looking out for McCluskey's career. And wallet. I just need to know one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Dresden looks up at you intently for a moment before speaking. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around those body lockers in the back and see if you find anything useful? Um, okay then. We'll go do that. Open the morgue drawer. The cold storage drawer is labeled John Doe, but the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. Open the drawer. The cold storage drawer opens to reveal the fully clothed body of a man, arms folded across his chest. In addition to sporting some of the brightest orange hair you've ever seen, the body seems to be in very good condition. Whoa, easy there. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. For someone who just woke up in a morgue locker, he seems unfazed and pretty well put together. He spot a data jack drilled into his temples, and some sh shamanistic tattoos peeking from his collar. An interesting combination. I told John to wake me up at 6 in the morning. Is it 6 yet? It doesn't feel like 6 yet. Um, uh, you were just sleeping in a freezer? Uh, a freezer for dead people? Don't tell me you haven't considered it cheaper than a coffin hotel, and the service is just as good. He chuckles. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I notice you haven't killed me yet, so that's good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? I'm looking into the death of Sam Watts. The coroner seems to think you can help me out. Sam, eh? Glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then, over at the Union. Decent enough guy. Always in trouble over something or other, though. Jake kills towards the other side of the room. John, is this lady cool? Yeah, she's on the level. Working for Sam, believe it or not. Some sort of dead man switch. I thought you could help her out. Maybe even stop moping about the shop all day. Thanks for volunteering me. He pauses. Might be sizing you up, but it's hard to tell behind those shades. All right, then. The name's Jake, and you are? Nice to meet you, Jake. I'm Miss Bella. And, well, men are too. Such a rare thing in this city. Well, it sounds like you're taking a dive into the deep end here. John's right. I might be able to help you out. I was with Sam the other night, the night of the murder, poor guy. He was hanging at the Seamstress's Union that night, dripped out and rowdy. 
I've been laying low there for a few days after a bad run. Mrs. Kubota asked me to throw Sam out, so I did. But out in the alley, some gangs, gangers got the jump on me. He winces. Damn, maybe I need some soy cough after all. John, could you grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup. My hands are dirty anyway. Now, what's wrong with this intestine? You hear a loud squelching sound as Dresden continues his work. Thanks, John. You're a real pal. Anyway, there's a big fat poor bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't exactly go according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners got the jump on us. Damn gangers thought we could they could turn a quick profit off my head. Jake Blasen, you get the impression. That didn't work out so well for the gangers. Sam stumbled off during the flight, though, and that's the last I saw of him. Until he turned up here, dead on arrival. Reminds me of my last day in this place. Do you know anything else? I know they found his body a block away from the Union, so just lying there in broad daylight. That's the Barons for you. Jake looks down, his expression masked by chrome and crimson glass. Shame, though. Wish I'd been there, if those slagging gangers hadn't come along. Tell you what, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to settle the score with those Halloweeners out there. Their leader got the whole gang search in the Barons for me. I need to get rid of that asshole. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit these streets alone at night. Trust me. Jake eyes you up and down. And maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while we're at it. What do you say? Nice to have someone watching your back out there. Assuming you could trust them. I get it. Gotta be careful in this trade. I'm not one to go back on a deal, though. John can vouch for that. Plus, you know where I'm hiding out, right? It doesn't leave me a lot of room to sell you out. What do you say? I do like a bit of street dust just every now and then. All right, Jake, count me in. Great. I've been hiding out here forever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Whiny bunch of gangers. But this stretch of the Barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you even made it into this morgue in one piece without packing some heat. He yells over his shoulder. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in the dumpster tomorrow. So, you need a weapon? Um. Oh, what am I going to pick? Give me a pistol. My weapon of choice as well. Here, take this one. I have gotten a Fischetti Security 500. So, ready for an evening out on the town. Just a minute. Tell me some more about these gang gangers first. Well, they are one of the nastier gangs in town. Their symbol is a flaming jack-o'-lantern, but you wouldn't like their version of trick-or-treating very much. Around here, they're led by a troll named John Paul. He's got all the Halloweeners and the Barons looking for me. We take him out, maybe I can breathe a bit easier. Just watch my back. Don't make me regret this. I'll follow your lead. The Halloweeners aren't looking for you. Yet. Okay, so we have gained a new party member, Jake Armitage. And I don't know what kind of person he is, but he seems kind of interesting. I have added Doc Wagon Basic Trauma Kit. And a Basic Med Kit. Well, uh, probably a good thing I checked. I get the feeling we are going to need those. But, that will be for next time. Until then, bye for now.